All right, so we will get started. We are waiting for others to come on. They may have had some problems, but we will clear that up. Okay, um, can you see the screen? That's the first question. I think Brother Robert is calling in. Okay. Um, Brother Robert, can you hear me? I guess that is the question I need to ask. Okay, thank you. Okay, just making sure you can hear me. Oh, oh, get thanks and praise, you, brother. <laughs> yes, brother. Just making sure you can hear me. Yes, there's others who are coming on, but I'm just making sure that you can hear me because you're the first one to yes, come. Yes, 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 brother. Yes. Okay, okay, yes, just making sure. I hear you well, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just want to make sure also that... Um, um, hopefully you can learn the system well enough so that you can pull it up on your computer. That way you can see the presentation. Yes, yes. Um, but if on. not, then what we will do is email you the presentation for tonight, in which that you will be able to go back and see the whole presentation in detail. Will you please email it tonight? The tonight presentation yes. when you on. The, yes, I, I give thanks for that's that's give thanks. Give All right. Help. Yes, Definitely. Thanks. Give That's thanks. That's all I need. Yeah, give thanks. Mm-hmm. Peace. What's up? What's up? We'll get started in a moment. <laughs> all right. Probably got all right. <laughs> Man, you went here to be in Rock Hill, man. Did you let me know? Yeah, we went. It was pretty good, too. Um, yo, yeah. yo, yo, yo. Um, also, um, Hey Crack was there. Um, so um, it was pretty good. It was a um, good um, concert. Old school. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. No, oh, I didn't think Eric B. I didn't think Eric B. and Rock Kim was still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was their 30th anniversary. Actually, it was they were. two years because that was um, 1986 when it actually came out. So actually, what it was their 32nd year, but 30th year anniversary tour. Yep. So, man. Yeah. So they did all the old songs, man. Yeah. Just think about it. We was 15 years old, man. <laughs> fifteen years old. Yeah, fifteen and sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. So they were doing thirty second anniversary. Yeah, the thirtieth um year anniversary. But of course, you know, they came out in nineteen eighty six when we heard. Uh, well, actually, yeah. 17, 16, 17 when when they came out. You know, because that was nineteen eighty six. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that was a minimum. No, oh, yeah, that was some moons ago. <laughs> That's when we was going to sports world. Yeah. Yeah, we were going to sports world back then. <laughs> Shine, yeah. Yeah. Hey, yo, yo. Oh, yeah, and Yo-Yo, yeah, she, and she sung Don't Play With My Yo-Yo, and, um, you know, she, she still, um, yep, she still looked the same, still doing the same dances that I remember her doing from back in the days. Golly. <laughs> yeah, we, um, that was a gift, because we did not expect to see her, because she wasn't on the, um, flyer, so, you know, we did not know that she even was going to be there. Nor did we know the head crack was going to be there. We didn't know, you know, we just seen that it was Eric B and Rod Kelm. 
But um, they never said that there was going to be special special guests or anything else. So, or anyone else, I should say. So, you know, that was that was that was a good surprise. I know that's right. Yeah. Matter of fact, yeah. yo, I did an Uber driver to the concert and put him up front. <laughs> it was now. She um she she um caught a Uber driver from the airport and had the Uber driver to come to the concert and put him up front. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what's up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was excellent, excellent little um, birthday gift, and um, you know, yeah. good, pretty good. Yeah, man. Anytime you you remember that concert we went to in Fayetteville? Who was it? Uh, 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 um, dog. Who was that? In Fayetteville. Oh. Me and Carl. Dog. Yeah, come on, I can't think of their name. That was the first and last concert I went been to. Right. Yeah, the first concert and the last concert. The first concert I ever been to and the last one I ever went to. Right. Oh, who was that? Hey, who was it? I can't think about who it was. God, there was a group they just come out too. They was good. Uh, 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 EPMD. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. EPMD. Oh yeah, that yeah that was a while. Oh yeah, yeah that was a while ago. Yeah, I think that was eighty nine. Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. I know, I know it was many moons ago. Oh yeah, yeah, that was definitely so many moons ago. <laughs> Almost thirty moons ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm just sitting in here, man, looking at looking at my deal. Right. Well, we're going to get ready to get started in a few. We're still waiting for others to get on. They've been having some problems connecting due to the access code. So I'm glad that oh. you're to get on. Okay, Doc. And Doc. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and me. Did Porky Pig have a, have a girlfriend he had a crush on? You pay? I can't remember. I think he did, but I can't they remember. They well, the guy, he's the same age. He's the same age as uh, I am. But uh, he was telling me that Porky Pig, it was a pig that came on there, a female pig. <laughs> but you rarely, rarely seen him. But he had a crush on him, but you rarely, you rarely, rarely seen him. I said, man, I'm a Looney Tune fan. Yeah, I think, yeah fan. I, think, I think I do remember that. I think I do remember. I don't remember. Yeah, but like it was, it was only one, one. It was rare. It wasn't. Um, yeah, it was rare. So you probably. I do. Remember. So yeah. Mhm. All right, all right. You getting ready to get started? People coming in. Um, Brother Frank and Ronisha sings. Hey, how you doing, Dr. Ali? Peace, peace. How you are? Peace, how you doing? All right. Peace, Doc. Peace. How you doing, Ronisha? I'm doing all right. I'm going I'm to see if I can log back on to the old, um, the old class because I think I've seen... Uh, Derek or somebody on the old line, so that he might not have received the email. 
So I'm going to let him know. You said you can't run this year? I think, because um, I had logged on to the, uh, the old line. Right. The, and um, I don't, I, I've seen somebody else on there. I think his name was Derek, but I don't think he used the information. Oh. I would love you for that, but I made sure I sent it to all that. Okay. And I called him too. Okay. Okay. I'm going to call him back. Okay. You okay. Yeah, oh, thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I knew they was having some problems getting on. Well, no, they was in the old one. Yeah, in the old one. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. We're going to use this one because this one has space as far as recording. We don't okay. have um, space on the other one. Mm -hmm. I just checked my email. I was like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad you checked it. Yes, I just like I had lost off and went back on like ten minutes later, and then it popped up. So. All right, excellent. And hi, Tisha. Tisha. How are you and Lawrence doing? We're doing well. Can you see the screen, Ronisha? Are you on your computer? Yes, I can see the screen. Okay, good. All right, excellent. Uh, let me check. Let me check. I'm going to check. Okay. Hit the floor coming in July. Huh? I said hit the floor coming in July. Some kind of show. New show before it come out. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, so we'll see y'all soon, okay? All right, we, um, Brother Jarek and his wife, Nicole, are trying to get on now, so. Yeah. I don't know if you heard it, Ronisha. Um, the guy that said thank you. Uh, You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, great. Got you. All right, once they come on, we'll get started, y'all. Okay, dokie. Basically, man know thyself was written at the entranceway of the Egyptian mystery schools. He understood that knowledge of self was the most important and the most valuable knowledge one could ever possess. All right? Mm -hmm. Its opposite, which is ignorance of self, was the source of all ills in the world. Um, that has not changed one bit, it seems. Um, you come with the highest information. Is this what this class is going to be dealing with? Is the highest. Good afternoon, Brother Thompson. Greetings. All right, so we're going to be dealing with this highest or higher information. And it's going to be coming from the ancient Egyptians or Kemetic or Tamarian um, people, our ancestors, as they have found 18 temples in the Grand Canyon in Arizona based on the ancient Egyptian philosophy. Um, in fact, 
when they examined the so-called Native Americans secret society, they found that more than 85% of the mysteries that was in the Native American secret societies were identical to Freemasonry, which is said secret society, because it's all based on the ancient Egyptian mystery school. So you have the comedic or metronatural word, which is Rik Shanu, which means knowledge of self. Rik means to be wise, to have knowledge, knowing with intent, known, unknown. You have chess, which is self, myself, himself, thyself, herself, themselves, with their own finger, the guide, himself, herself. You have new, all right, which of, all right, new also means primordial waters, all right, because knowledge is just like the flow of water. It's infinite. Water can be found everywhere. Water is in your body, 75%. Water is on the earth, 75%. Water is in space. Water are on planets. Water is on comets, asteroids, meteorites. Water is everywhere. All right? Yeah. Um, so, so this is the mystery. All right? So man know thyself, and by knowing thyself, you would know the universe and God. All right? So this is also taken from the tablet of Tahuti, known all known world over as the Philosopher's Stone um, teachings, which actually is the pineal gland when you look at it from a metaphysical perspective. You have here Ernest A. Wallace Budge, or Sir E. A. Wallace Budge, who wrote the book, an Egyptian hieroglyphic reading book, as well as also the ancient Egyptian um, language, or the Egyptian language. So these are some books in which that you would want to have in your library, as it helps to understand the physics and quantum physics from an ancient Egyptian comedic Tumerian perspective. If you wish to understand the universe, think of energy, frequency, and vibration. This is by Nikola Tesla. All right? Now, those concepts are found in various books. You will have the Kabbalion, which is written by the three initiates. You have the sacred science written by John Baines. And you have it here in Ancient Future from Professor Wayne B. Chandler. Now, um, Professor Wayne Chandler, he's a good friend of mine. And he breaks down the laws of Tahuti which is called Hermitri Majestis or Thoth, with his, his Greek name, into seven universal principles or laws. And the first is mine, in which that the all is mine and everything is mental, or the all is mine and everything is energy. The universe is mental. All right, that's the one that we will be dealing with the most out of the seven principles in this presentation for tonight. So that's the main one to remember. The all is mine and everything is energy. The universe is mental. That's the main one. Of course, you have correspondence as above, so below, as within, so without. You have vibration, nothing is stationary. Everything vibrates. The world of light, sound, color, polarity. Everything has doubles. Everything has its opposite. The extremes meet. Rhythm. All is ebb and flow, demonstrated by a call you. Well, action and reaction, events and recall you. Cause and effect, nothing happens by chance, all right? Everything happens according to law. So there's really no such thing as coincidence because it's all based on law. It was meant to be. Generated, yeah. manifested in everything, and everything animated and inanimated is also masculine and feminine, all right? But remember, we dealing with the all is mine. Everything is energy. The universe is mental. So 
Though all is mind, the universe is mental. Thought leads to the manifestation of things and events. Thoughts create our state of existence and the quality of our experience here on earth. Therefore, be responsible for everything you create by being responsible for everything you think. Right? I can't say that enough. Everything is energy, and that's all there is to it. If you match the frequency of the reality you want, then you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy. This is physics. All right? And it says Daryl Anka, but Albert Einstein also realized this science. If you match the frequency of the reality you want, you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy. This is physics. So in this presentation, I'm going to lean your mind towards the highest science there is, which is to transform your body into light. You already are a light being. However, you've been held down into gross matter, material world, material apparent reality. You've been held down, locked down, cold transmission of light. All right? But we're going to try to lighten your burden, the yoke off of you, by dealing into yoga or yoga. Um, so this is what tonight's discussion is going to be on. And this is Oni Elijah Muhammad, and he said something very important. He said, long before there was ever a Caucasian or white race on the earth, to the earth, you and I and our fathers were not just thousands of years, not just hundreds of thousands of years, not just millions of years, not just billions of years, but trillions of years ago, according to the word that Allah gave to me, that we and our fathers were here. There is no birth record, meaning there is no beginning record of the black people. They have been here forever and forever they have. We do not know nothing about their beginning. There is no about any ending of them. This is known. The world knows it. And this is coming from Muhammad. I'm um, talking about the master for Muhammad, not a silk peddler. You can go to MohammedSpeaks.com. Now, the trillions of years that he's talking about specifically is because um, we find in the book Black Root Science that stars are the condensation of the minds of our ancestors who came from a previous universe. All right? So when he's saying that we was here, the mind was here before the structure of the physical body, and the mind formed the physical body to inhibit. I'm going to say that again. The mind formed the physical body to inhibit. The mind is the soul. The mind is the soul, and the soul is God. Right. And at the end of the previous universe, our ancestors expanded their minds beyond measure until they encompassed the whole universe. The whole universe. But there, there, are multiple, there are multiverses. But that process of expansion causing the apparent contraction of their universe until it was reduced to the size of a single planet. In stages in the empty space surrounding the new earth created the seven substances, which is magnetism, electricity, light, heat, energy, and etc., which eventually formed the new stars after many trillions of years. So when you watch the cartoon... Lion King, and you see Simba talking to his father, Mufasa, who veiled or veiled his physical form, who physically passed on in the movie, he became a star in the sky. Now, is this something unusual? No. All the indigenous cultures in the world say the exact same thing that when you pass physical form, you become a star in the sky. This is among all the indigenous cultures, whether it's the Native American. Um, here are the indigenous aboriginal Moors that was here in the Americas, or it was the Moors in Africa, or whether it was the Moors in Australia, or the Moors in Hawaii, 
in the Pacific Islands or the Caribbean, the Moors in the Caribbean Islands. They all say the same thing. All the indigenous cultures say the same thing. They have the tales of the fact that at one time we were stars. Now, is this so much out the way? No, if you read the book Black Out the Whitewash by Dr. Suzar, she states that humanity's first prototype began as a long-lived godlike ethereal um, hermaphroditic being that gradually polarized into opposite um, sexes, male and female, and solidified into flesh form. This is what she states. All right? So, what's the science on it? Well, if you study morphogenics, and the name of the book is called A Morphogenic or Morphogenetic Process in Low Energy Electromagnetic Fields, ST and SP, or Samian, and it's called the Journal of Biological Physics. All right? The Journal of Biological Physics. This is what it says is that the ancients understood or understanding of the light force principle in nature was scientifically revalidated in 1986 by a Sydney-based energy research team. They rediscovered, rediscovered a hitherto unknown low-energy spiraling electromagnetic field, an expression of one fundamental background field and found to be the responsible agent for form, growth, development, and behavioral patterns in nature called morpho morphogenesis or morpho morphogenesis. Right? Genetics. So this here yeah. is an image of, <laughs> on the left, is of a three-month-old fetus called a quantograph. Right, a quantum graph or picture from the quantum field. And it was created while the pregnant woman was hundreds of miles away. The image came from accessing information available in only one drop of her blood. So in her blood had the image of the fetus already being manifested. And the image on the right called a quantum gram or hologram of the quantum field shows a 3D characteristics of the fetus. The details of this provocative imaging technique, plus many more compelling images, are only available in the book, Strong Woman, Unshrouding the Secrets of the Soul. So, this is part of the uh, morphogenics is the quantum graph. Right or the quantum gram, which is a hologram. You yourself is a hologram. All right, I'll get to that in a second. Natural systems or morphic or morphic units at all levels of complex complexity: atoms, molecules, crystals, cells, tissues, organs, organisms, and societies of organisms are animated, organized, and coordinated by morphic fields, which contains an inherited memory. Now, that means you can't have a inherited memory of an ape species. Otherwise, you will be an ape species. You could have an inherited memory of monkeys. Otherwise, you will be a monkey species. So see, when they're saying that they based everything on similarities, which is based on Charles Darwin theory of evolution, yeah. what they yeah. really are saying is that they are missing the collective memory or the inherited memory of the species. Natural system inherited this collective memory from all previous things of their kind. That's the key word. Their kind. 
not the eight species, okay, by a process called morphic resonance with the results that patterns of development and behavior became increasingly habitual through repetition. There is a continuous spectrum of morphic fields, including morphogenetic um, fields, behavioral fields, mental fields, and social and cultural fields. This is Rupert um, Sheldrick, right? He breaks this down. So we understand is that this is shown to us, even when you get the example of what's called the 100th monkey, um, the 100th monkey theory or the hundred monkey, they speak of how um, there's a phenomenal account of when you had Japanese scientists and they speak of the story of the hundred monkey effect and how it was published by um, Lyle Watts, Watson or Watson um, in 1975 and it's called the Rhythms of Vision. And in there, he speaks of unidentifying scientists who conducted a, a, a study on the macro, the macro um, monkeys on the Japanese island of Hoshima in 1952. And these scientists observed that some of the monkeys learned to wash sweet potatoes. And gradually, this new behavior begin to spread through the younger generation of monkeys. In the usual fashion, though, the observation and repetition. Watson then concluded researchers um, observed that once a critical number of monkeys was reached, as in 100, this previous learning behavior instantly spread across the waters to monkeys on nearby islands. So eventually, all the monkeys knew how to wash their sweet potatoes in the water to get the dirt off the sweet potatoes. Because that is collective memory. That is inherited memory. And it's a feel in which that was able to tap in. All right? And this same field exists throughout nature based on their species. And as it says, all previous things of their kind. All right, so you get the book Forbidden Science from Ancient Technologies to Free Energy by J. Douglas Kenyon. He states that for the past 15 years, Drake has focused his scientific interest on how systems are organized, pioneering what he called the hypothesis of formative causation, the system of morphic fields and morphic resonance. Thanks to Power Rangers and other kid toys, most of us casually use the word morph, means to change into or evolve. Precisely, say Seldrick, who work take off from um, from um, where the now um, widely adapted bio biological concept of morphic genetic fields used to explain, for example, how arms and legs can be different shapes even though they contain the same genes and proteins left off. So Sheldrake surmise, surmises that the fields evolved along the system they organize and coordinate, all right? Since a field is a sphere of influence, morphic fields would be those that can change or evolve this sphere of influence. He say there are morphic fields within and around individual cells, tissue, organs, organisms, social uh, societies, ecosystems, and so on. And the fields that are shaped by past events and, pr and patterns though or in built memories called morphic resonance. This is how he reasons instincts and species specific develop abilities, right? Deve um, abilities develop. The inevitable coherence of birds and flight is due to the morphic field that links them and the resident memory 
that has evolved through millenniums. And of course, you can see this because as soon as the baby comes out the womb, um, they know to go to the woman's or the mother's tick. How do they know that? All right, how do they know that? Because this is something that is inherited. This is inherited yeah. memory. All right? Oh, no way yeah. a child should be able to know that's freshly, com freshly coming out the womb to put his mouth on a without the mother having to show the child to do so. And for the child to instantly begin to suck in order to get the milk. How does the child know that? That's because of the morphogenetic fields, which formed our physical body into existence and which that also passes inherited memory onto us. All right, we refer to it as consciousness. <laughs> all right, so all of this is talking about the fact that we were stars, and of course, stars is part of the um, universe. Nearly five percent of the universe, the other ninety-five percent of the universe is dark matter and black energy. Right? Um, yeah. You have the birth of a star, you have this stellar nursery, and a star begins to form in a nebula, and Orion constellation has a nebula, a cloud of interstellar hydrogen gas and dust, and then of course you have um, global, which is the gas and the dust compressed due to gravitational forces, which actually the gravitational force is actually centripetal and centrifugal force, push and pull. Inhale, exhale. All right, that's gravity. So if there's something in which that can pull you down, then it must be also something that can push you up. All right, that's that is the um. There's not just one way of looking at gravity, as scientists have told us. Actually, what they taught us in school was centripetal and centrifugal force, which is push and pull. That's the same force that holds your physical body together right now is the push and pull of sympathical and centrifugal force which is called insulation and exhalation the difference between a living body and a dead body is that one is breathing one is it the one that is breathing which is insulation and exhalation which is sympathical force or centrifugal force push and pull is the one that is living the one that no longer exert the push and pull force insulation exhalation Centrifugal force, sympathical force, is passed on. All right? The body is no longer breathing, right or wrong. Right. So that means that that force has left that body. All right? Or right. I should say the power of that force. Let's say that. All right. So basically, we have the gas and dust compressed down to gravitational forces, forming a slowly rotating globe. And this global collapse, and this gravitational force overcomes um, gas pressure. The globalist collapse, and cooling occurs, and the spin increases. Um, the spin increases to such a point, and the pressure and the temperature increases, and the globalist differentiates into a um, basically a um, proto planetary disks, which may become planets, and a central core, which will become a star, all right? So at the core of this planet Earth, um, it is 6,000 degrees in temperature. The sun's surface is 6,000 degrees. Wow. So above, so below, as within, so without, you find out that your Kundalini it's 6,000 degrees. So hence, when you raise the Kundalini up, all right, and it hits and strikes the pineal gland, it awakens Heru, which is known also as your Christ. All right? Um, that, is, that is the God within you that you're looking for. All right? 
Um, this is the God that is mentioned within 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that your body is the temple of God and God dwells within you? So this is the God that you're looking for. It's not outside of you, just somewhere dangling around up in the sky, and you saying, oh, that's the man upstairs. No, this is the God within you. All right? And so you have to activate the God within you so that you can become um, the ruler of your life. All right? Because this life is something in which that is precious. And if we continue on going through this, you'll see what we're talking about. All right? Because we find that 93% of the human body is made of atoms fused in sun, in the um, suns or stars. And supernovas. So the death of stars give rise to life. See, we've been taught that a European from 2,000 years ago died for your sins in order so that you may live. And that's not true. So this is interesting that there's a Bible verse that states that we was bought at a price. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20 says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you're not your own? For you was bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. So where's, where's the Holy Spirit? It's in your body. The Holy Trinity is inside of you. And it says, right. Spirit, which are God. So here, what is this price that they're talking about? Christians believe that the verse is referring to Jesus dying on the cross for us. However, as a metaphysician, we understand that the stars died for us. Hence the reason why we say also stars or the sun. So the sun died for us indeed, but it wasn't a European from 2,000 years ago. It's a star or a sun that died trillions of years ago so that we may live as pre previously mentioned. For a star to be born, there is one thing that must happen. A gaseous nebula must collapse, as I showed you. Now, how do we know this? Astrophysics tells us this. Neil deGrasse Tyson, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, he states, so you're made of detritus from exploded stars. Get over it, or better yet, celebrate it. After all, what's nobler thought can one cherish than the universe lives within us all? Not only do we live among the stars, the stars live within us. How true is this? Well, this is, this is coming from astrophysicists. This is coming from the Bible. Is the Bible and the astrophysicists lying? No. They're understanding oh. now what is taking place with the human body because 93% of your physical body is stardust material. Right? Get the book, Dark Light Consciousness, Melanin, Serpent Power, and the Luminous Matrix of Reality by Dr. Edward Bruce Bynum. He states, the living interconnected web of life of the earth on earth in Gaia is real. Almost forgotten in recent centuries. Remember, he's talking about this web. This interconnected web. Remember, this is what we read about morphogenetics. This collected consciousness that we just talked about. He says it is now re-emerging that we understand in this science. Gaia enfolds the earth and as it extends into the vast darkness of interstellar space where visible light is but 7% of luminous matter and the other 93% is unseen. The unseen reality is apparently composed of a mysterious darkness that together with space folding gravity surrounds our galaxy and holds the constellations together. All right? Once again, this is centripetal and centrifugal force. The dynamics of these two forces, push and pull. The stellar darkness calls to us in this dynamic. We also suggest why this dark matter may in some case interact with consciousness itself. Because you find out that it is consciousness. 
that dark matter that he's talking about is consciousness. That's what existed before the light. When God was in the darkness and he said, let there be light. <laughs> right? In terrestrial and biological evolution, we glimpse how our carbon-based life form or expressed through the universal dark biochemical process of melanin and neuromelanin. That is the consciousness. Both are crucial and strategically located in the body and nervous system of all the higher mammals on our planet. It increases presence, mirrors, the unfoldment of evolution. Neuromelanin in our own species is literally a form of biolight intricately enfolded and interwoven into the loom of our organs and nervous system. All right, he goes on. Melanin and neuromelanin reaches its zenith, zenith of concentration and activity in the brain and nervous system of our own species. Regardless of surface or purported racial dif differentiation, the biological significance of surface or mere skin racial typing Within the human species is presence, a minor scientific fact, but a political, powerful dynamic. For the global human perspective, it is a phenotypic, some typic premutation of small consequences in the ocean of genetics and biological similarities. However, deeper down, we study or share the subtle bioluminous and bioelectrical aspects of our nervous systems. Our brain and internal organ system, regardless of ethnicity, are covered with light-sensitive melanin. The inner core of our spinal line is composed of densely packed pigment neutral tissue. We share a resonance and a resonance with each other in the cosmic cosmos of light and living darkness. So we find I found a very old picture of you here, <laughs> and basically, as we said, thank those dead stars. I think in Hollywood they refer to their actors and actresses as what stars. So thank those dead stars. Without them, you would not be here. The calcium in your blood or in your bones, excuse me, the oxygen in your breath and the iron in your blood was all cooked up in stars that died billions or should I say trillions of years ago. Okay, so when we're talking about someone dying for you, it was the stars, the sun that died for you so that you can have everlasting life in the physical that is as well as also in the spiritual. So Neil deGrasse Tyson goes on in astrophysics for people in a hurry. He says that the atoms in our bodies are traceable to stars that manufactured them in the cores and exploded th these in rich ingredients across our galaxy billions of years ago. For this reason, we are biologically connected to every other living thing in the world. We are chemically connected to all molecules on earth and we are atomically connected to all atoms in the universe we are not figuratively but literally stardust so what is that man was made from the dust of the ground it's talking about stardust wow <laughs> the dust that you was made from that's why it talks about the book of genesis your genes morphogenetics oh you get it Genesis. <laughs> the first book in your Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Biblios. So we see the birth of a cell and the death of a star. Very familiar. Nearly looks the same. Because the death of a star is the birth of a cell. <laughs> birth of a star. 
yeah. and you have 76 trillion cells in your body. Right? Get the book, Death of Ignorance, New Age Science by Dr. Fred Bell. Right? Dr. Fred Bell explains it. He says that the earth auric field is this hominis because mankind is not yet as a unit producing harmonious auric interchange with the surrounding nature and universe. The bulk of mankind is called the growth resistant generation or GRG. That's what's going on. All right. Most people don't want to grow into this information that we're going to be going over tonight. I guarantee you how I know because we already get in that growth resistant generation or ignoration <laughs> or ignorance, I should say, on our um, channel when I went over this information without the slide presentation. But now I'm using the slide pre presentation and this is going to devastate them because we find out that your DNA has wormhole potential. And it says from the wormhole to the four levels of the genome, DNA molecule is how you receive information. All right. Now, what are the four levels of the genome DNA molecule? Well, you have the four amino acids, the building blocks of life. You have adenine, um, adon, um, adenine thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Now, adenine and thymine is 30% phosphorus electrons of H2 atoms spinning clockwise. Then you have guanine and cytosine, which is 70% sugar electron spinning counterclockwise. Right? So 70 and 30 is 100. So these are the four building blocks that formed your physical body into existence. These four um, amino acids or DNA molecules is what is known as Yahi Vahi, the four letters of the Tetragrammaton, which you call Jehovah or Yahweh. Yahi Vahi, Y-H-W or V-H. That's what those four letters, which is called the tetragrammaton, a, a tetra, um, um, the tetragrammaton, is actually symbolic to is these four amino acids, which are the building blocks of life. This is why the Gnostics, the early Gnostic Christians, believe that um, Yahweh or Jehovah, as he was called nowadays in the English transliteration, was an evil deity. Was because they knew the of how the physical body was formed into existence and how the stars utilize and remember the stars are the thoughts of our ancestors who condense the mind eventually into physical form as we just went over so they did not like that fact that we um, utilize the mind to form because remember, God has to know itself. How can God know itself if it never incarnates in the flesh? This is what the Bible is telling you when it speaks about um, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and the Word became flesh in the book of John. That Word that became flesh is you, not just Jesus from 2,000 years ago. We all became that flesh. We all was that word, that sound, that light, that light that became human form. Here we go. Astronomers admit we were wrong. 100 billion habitable Earth-like planets in our galaxy alone. Estimates by astronomers indicate that there could be more than 100 billion Earth-like worlds in the Milky Way that could be the home to life. Think about, think that 
think that's a big number? According to astronomers, there are roughly 500 billion galaxies in the known universe, which means that there are 50 times 1022 habitable planets. That, of course, if there is just one universe, which there isn't. There's multiple universes, as I talked about earlier. In fact, just inside of our own Milky Way galaxy, experts now believe that there are 400 billion stars. But this number may seem to be small, as astrophysicists believe that, there, um, that the stars in our galaxy could be, in the figure, the trillion. This means that the Milky Way galaxy alone could be the home of more than 100 billion planets. There are some calculations which suggest that the Milky Way is the home on an average between 800 billion to 3.2 trillion planets. But there are some experts who believe that the number could be as high as 8 trillion. So we definitely know that we came from the stars as there's so much stardust in which that also formed these planets into existence which formed our physical bodies into existence. So once again, we know that more than 90% of our body mass is in fact stardust because all the elements except for hydrogen and helium were created in the stars. All right? So quantum physicists states that the man is physically made up of the remnants of stardust. In addition, prana means that life breath or life force energy is the color of blood like a ruby, red gem. The seed of prana is in all is at the heart. Prana is the sum total, all right? Prana um, is what Christians refer to as the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. Um, prana is also chi in the Orient, in, in um, China. It is ki in Japan. It is called kahuna mana in Hawaii, all right? But prana is the Sanskrit, Vedic Sanskrit word for the sum total of all energy that is manifested in the universe. It is the sum total of all latent forces and powers which are hidden in man and which, high, which lies everywhere around us. We're talking about heat, light, electricity, magnetism, or all manifestations of prana. Did you can get this from the book, The Science of Pranayama by Swami Shavan, um, Savananda. The word prana itself means in Sanskrit, root pra, which means first, and na, which means the smallest unit of energy. So prana also means the first breath or the most basic unit of energy, subatomic particles, stars, stardust particles. Prana is the light force that is responsible for forming and regulating energy in the form of matter. Once again, prana is the life force that is responsible. So we're talking about that spiraling effect of the morphogenetic fields, that is prana. As it is the life force that is responsible for forming and regulating energy into the form of matter. Right now, get the book, The Divine Spark, by Graham Hancock. He writes, by weight, 93% of the matter in your body was born in the body of a star. We know that stars turn matter itself into energy of light. So this is now why you understand that the sun is being blocked out by chemtrails, which has aluminum in it. And when you hold a piece of aluminum up to the sun, what does it do? It reflects. Now you know why your skies are being laced with aluminum and barium and bacterial spores and nanobot technology because they want to hide the sun because they know that the stars, remember the sun is a star, can turn matter itself into the energy of light agent of the electromagnetic force. Light informs us that the world around us and brings in energy. Light is the catalyst in photosynthesis. So the same way that plants receive photosynthesis from the sun, you receive photosynthesis from the sun. There's only one difference between melanin molecule and chlorophyll plant molecule, magnesium. That's it. 
your body no longer make magnesium. At the core is now iron. Still make magnesium. So at the core of the plant and chlorophyll is magnesium. Side of that core, it is identical. It is identical. So on land and in the world's ocean, where water molecules and carbon dioxide from the air are rearranged into the basic building blocks of the entire vegetable world, during this process, the energy of the sun's light is stored in plants just like it's stored in you. Your melanin helps you store light in three locations, in the third eye area, in the heart, and at the navel. During this process, the energy of the sun's light is stored in plants and their seeds transferring to us when we eat these basic foods and other animals that ate them. This is energy that powers life and consciousness. We are made of stardust and powered by sun or starlight. This much we know. All right? This much we know. So, in the occult teachings, if you study the Rosicrucian teachings, the Ostara teachings, Freemasonry, the Anthroposophical Society's teachings, Theosophical Society teachings, Philosophical Society teachings, say that there's a realm that exists after the death of the physical body or while you are alive, you call it a dream world that you go to at night when your spirit, that spiritual soul, leaves the physical body at night and it goes into the dream world. This world that you go to when you go to sleep at night, as well as also when you leave your physical body and that ethereal cord or silver cord is cut, is called the astral world. Astral. And so when you look up astral in the Merriam Dictionary, since 1824, it says astral, or relating to or coming from the stars. So, you have astral light that comes from our sun and from the cosmos, from the various stars, constellations, that the astral influences on you because you have melanin and you become sensitive to those particular energies. And it helps you graduate in consciousness. All right? There it is. It says, number three, of or consistent of a super sensible substance held in theosophy to be next above the tangible world in refinement. So, the true teachings is not an accumulation of knowledge. It is an awakening of consciousness which goes through successful stages. This is an ancient Egyptian proverb. What are these successful stages that consciousness goes through? Well, we find that the breath is the mind in action. And the breath is prana. prana. So you have the states of consciousness. And no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. This is Albert Einstein. So, in order to go deeper into the state of consciousness, you have to breathe deeper. And your breath is what helps you transcend the average person's conscious level. Because 18 breaths a minute, the person breathes. 18 breaths a minute, the person breathes what is called the beast breath. That's too hyperventilating. And plus, you only tap into interpersonal consciousness at that level. If you lower your breath to nine breaths a minute, you enter intrapersonal consciousness. At 7.5 breaths a minute, you enter to what is called life consciousness. At six breaths a minute, you enter subconsciousness. At 4.5 breaths a minute, you enter superconsciousness. At three breaths a minute, you enter magnetic consciousness. At one breath a minute, which is 30 seconds in, 30 seconds out, you enter into infinite consciousness. If you were able to do this for 72 minutes, one hour and 12 minutes, 
you would tap into your subatomic body and control everything around you. This is what the ancients knew because the breath is the mind in action. This is the formula. I just gave you the greatest science of all times. And it's up to you to be responsible with it. This is the same thing that you find in psychology when they tell you about gamma waves, beta waves, alpha waves, theta waves, delta waves. Superconsciousness, beta is consciousness, alpha is subconsciousness, theta is superconsciousness, delta is dream state. It's the exact same thing in psychology. That these are states of consciousness. I just showed you how you can utilize your breath to go into each one of these states at will. Simply slow down your breath. This is what they found that sound waves travel at 1,120 feet per second or beats per second. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. And thought travels at 24 billion miles per second. So, what we also found out as is if I take a six-point star configuration and overlay it over your body at 19.47 or 19.5 degrees, it will be an upswelling of energy from the north, from the south, and also an upswelling of energy potential at the north. All right, this is what you're seeing here. This is symbolic to the Kundalini at the base of the spine. And as it comes up through the spinal column and it goes up to the brain, sitting at the helm in the brain is the pineal gland. So at 19.47 degrees, your pineal gland can become activated with a swollen of energy, which raises from the Kundalini at 19.47 degrees. But the same overlaying and put it on the planets at 19 um, degrees approximately, you will see a upswelling of energy in the Hawaiian Islands. This is why the Hawaiian Islands broke apart in which that the Hawaiian Islands all together with some of the other um, Pacific Islands were once we, was once called Lemuria or Mo. This is also um, on the sun. You will see the sunspot activity at 19 degrees and that upswelling of energy will call corona mass ejections or CMEs which is also referred to as solar flares, super flares, mega flares. If I took this and lay, overlaid it on Mars, it would be at the site of Sidona, which is where they found the head of the, um, of the head on Mars, as well as pyramids, structures at that site. If I overlaid it on Jupiter, it would be right there where the spiraling of the red dot is located at in which that is a massive storm, which is hundreds of times, which is dozens and dozens of times larger than the planet Earth. So this is what we understand. And so also in the Quran, it specifically states that there's 19 that is over it. Those 19 angels that are over it is talking about those angles of light. The first substance of the universe is magnetism, and it was created by condensation. Condensation of what? Condensation of the mind. God's mind in an expanded state, i.e. the universe, formed the first substance, magnetism. Magnetism condensed further to form the second substance, electricity. Electricity condensed into light, which is the third substance. Electricity condensed um, of particles or electrons. So electrons what form light into existence. So when it says that um, that's the origin of light. So when we say that God created lights by saying let there be lights or kun fire kun, is the electrons moving from higher orbital shells to lower orbital shells is the origin of light. This is why God is called in the Old Testament El, as in Elo or Elohim. El 
is God's name. This is why the angels had the last name El, Mikael, Gabriel, Raphael, Yuri El. Why Moors have the last name El. Right? So when we say the mind of God, all right, so right here, electricity. Um, so which condense further, the electrons condense further into form the fourth substance called ether or space, all coming out of nothingness or nothing or the mind of God. When we say the mind of God is nothing, that does not mean that it doesn't exist. It means that the mind is not a thing. It's obvious obvious to everyone that the mind or consciousness is not a tangible thing, yet it is the source of all things. The Vedic wisdom tells us that our soul is our conscious. So your soul is your consciousness, which is, i.e., your mind, which is your breath, which is the prana that flows through you, which is all around you. So we find that electrons are the building blocks of the universe. The universe is composed of electrons, which are the electron spiritual substance, the first form that spirit assumes as matter. So the first form that spirit assumes as matter is the electron. The electrons is the electric or the electronic spiritual substance. And electrons, as they move, are transformed into apparent lines. Just like an object swung around and around and around with such a speed as to form an apparent circle. The apparent lines intertwining along themselves producing the illusion of matter, i.e. of solid, impenetrable matter, of which consists of three dimensional bodies surrounding us, including our own organism, a mass of atoms vibrating so swiftly as to appear to be solid. So this is where you get the concept of solid, liquid, and gas. Which appears as solid matter is an illusion created by speed that appears to form the fine web of lines made by the trace of motion of the smallest material points. So, as you see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the electron, orbital, shell, there are seven orbital shells. Seven orbital shells. Of the, for the electron, and as it moves up, it transforms, as you say, Roy, Gbiv, for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Hence, forms the light structure or light spectrum in which that we see, or the spectrum as it, a visible spectrum as it is called nowadays. All right, so the sun we find the Roman word for sun, S O L. So, right? your, that's why your sun within you is called S O U L. So, the soul outside of you is the sun in Latin, and the soul within you, which is Latin goes back to Ra. Right? This is why they say that you're an old soul if you have a lot of information or wisdom as a child. Well, the sun is the personified in many mythologies. The Greeks called it Helios. All right? So the Romans called it soul, but they also refer to it as halo. And the halo or Helios both of these words, the Greek Roman words, are derived from the ancient Egyptian metronature, which means halo or heru, as we refer to it, heru. A E R U, where we get the English transliteration, hero, as in superheroes. Superman is a hero. All these heroes within Marvel Comics and DC Comics and so forth and so on. These are heroes, all in the image and after the likeness of the of Hero, who was the first hero. 
and you yourself still can become that hero today. That in a few minutes here. So all this movement from the surging of the mighty ocean to that subtle movement concerned in our thoughts has but one common cause. All this energy emanates from one single center, one single source, the sun. The sun is the spring that drives all. The sun maintains all human life and supplies all human energy. They made you afraid of the sun. You become cavemen and women. You no longer are sun worshippers. This is the reason why when they first came in contact with us, they referred to us as sun worshippers, because we understood the value of the sun in our everyday activity. This is why you see the Orientals practicing Qigong, Tai Chi, is the absorption of the sun rays. Ancient Egyptians did all of this. This is where it comes from. So you find that the S-O-L, which is the Roman name for sun, his other name is Halo, is referred to it as the Ba. Right? This is the three elements of the Egyptian concept of soul. You have the Ka, which is the lifeful spiritual double of the person. You have the Ba, representative as the head of a human-headed bird that leaves the body when a person dies. The face of the Ba, which is the exact likeness of that of the deceased person. You have the Aku, or Ak, is the soul of Ra, representing light, the transfigured spirit of the person that becomes one with light after death. Now, you become light while still living. You don't have to wait to die. You can activate your, your Aku body right here and right now. Right, this is the science of the soul. When you look here in Wikipedia and you see the word soul, it says in many religions, philosophical and mythological traditions, this is a belief in the incorporeal essence of a living being called the soul. Soul or psyche, which Greek is psyche, which means what? To breathe. So when I said that the breath is the mind in action, I mean that. And it says... The soul or psyche are the mental abilities of a living being. Reason, character, feeling, consciousness, memory, perception, thinking. We come down to a uh, wicked dictionary. So the essence, the spirit or essence of a person usually thought to consist of one's thoughts and personality. Often believed to live on after the person's death. The spirit or essence of everything or anything. Three, life, energy, vigor. Four, soul music. Five, a person especially as one among many. Six, an individual life. So you come up to Merriam-Webster Dictionary and soul, and it says the, Im the immaterial essence, animating principle, or actuating cause of an individual's life. Two, the spiritual principle embodying the human being, all rational spiritual beings, or the universe. B. Capitalize in Christian science, the soul is who? God. So your divine spark, which they call the soul, is God within you, as the Bible told you. First Corinthians three sixteen and etc. Three. A person's total self. So the soul is the person's total self. That's the physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual. The total self is the soul. In the book, Breath, Mind, and Consciousness, Harish Johari, he says right here, the breath is the physical counterpart of the mind. Just like the melanin in your body is the, spirit, is the physical counterpart of the spiritual soul. And the breath is the physical counterpart of the mind, just like the melanin in your body, in your physical anatomy, is the physical 
counterpart of the spiritual soul. The melanin is the physical aspect of you that can breathe prana. And I'll see that in a second. The mind uses the cerebral cortex of the brain, the two hemispheres, as its tool. These two hemispheres coordinates with the entire organism through neuromelanin responses or neuromelanin activity or sensory of the body or performed with the help of the breath. So breath is mind in action. Breath provides the pranic force of the organism. This pranic force works as the air element, shoe, created movement, pulsation, vibration in life. The word spirit comes from the Latin words spiritus, which literally means breath. So when you look up spirit, the definition of spirit synonymous is breath. When you look up breath, you will see within the definition spirit. So breath and spirit are synonymous. They're interchangeable. So when you talk about the Holy Spirit, you're talking about the Holy Breath. <laughs> Mind and consciousness are abstract terms, whereas breath is a physiological reality. We know that you're breathing. <laughs> if not, you what? Dead. <laughs> so we know. So when people say, well... Um, I can't read your mind. Well, I can see the way that you're breathing. <laughs> and it looks sporadic. It's not in sync. It's not deep enough. So that means that you must be on your lower self, Negro. Get yourself up. <laughs> the study of consciousness begins with the study of the true science of breathing. Breathing. Breath induces movement. Breathing itself is a neuromotor activity. The science of controlling prana is known as pranayama, a branch of hatha yoga. The term yoga, which literally means union, refers to a discipline, a way of evolving the higher faculties of the mind. There are many paths in yoga, but in essence, they all have one goal, the union of self with God. On the physical Level, this means that the union of the lower brain with the upper brain. Man's faculties of abstract thinking and his aspirations for the higher ideals of life, seated in the cerebral cortex, often conflict with his instinctive animal nature, seat in the lower brain. But we attempt to rise above that. Because if you go to um, what is called the Chara. Um, yoga, um, Shiva, Sharodhanyan, Danya, and um, Yana, um, Sharodhanya, it says the life span of a man is measured not in the years, but in numbers of breaths. 15 breaths per minute, a human life is comprised of about 946 million, 800,000, well, 80,000 breaths, which is a full 120 years. By reducing the length of the breath and simultaneously the, the breath rate, one's lifespan increases. Prana is breath. The breathing process itself is a neuromotor action since insulation and exhalation are done with the help of the nerves. Breathing is controlled by a cycle of electromagnetic impulses, and electromagnetic energy passes downward from the medulla oblongata to the solar plexus region, causes the continuous process of expansion and contraction of the lungs, which carries this electrical or electric and magnetic to the controlling diaphragmatic muscles. This is to refine it to a subtle medium called solar prana. Therefore, 
Breath is the physical counterpart of the mind, and the breath is the mind in action. Spirit and breath are synonymous, which is shu. Breath normally cannot be seen unless the temperature is cool or cold, and due to the heat in the breath, precipitation, which is tefnut, which is moisture. Breath, spirit, connects the organism with consciousness, matter with the mind. Its presence is life and absence is death. Therefore, it is the breath that holds the human composition together. Sympathical, pull, inhale, and centrifugal, push, exhale forces. That is what you call yin and yang, female or feminine and masculine, male. I call it the holy breath. Holy breath. In the Holy Quran, Circle 7 of the Moral Science Temple of Science, we know that the breath affects the whole body. It affects the nervous system, the heart, the digestive system, muscles, sleep, energy levels, concentration, memory, and much more. Breathing is also our largest system for waste removal. 70% of the waste produced in the body is supposed to be removed by breathing. 20% by the skin and 10% by urination and defecation. Kidney and digestive system. I'm sorry. All right? Even when you have a good piss and good shit, you did not get all of it out. Okay? This is why the breath is so important. All right? We're not only breathing oxygen, which is the eighth element on the periodical sh um, chart, but also life energy, which is chi or ki or prana, the Holy Spirit, ruach. All right? That's what the Holy Spirit is. In Hebrew, it is called ruach. Ruach. All right, so, and Ruach is Ra, <laughs> okay, with an ancient comedic teaching. So, Ra, Ruach, and Ruach is actually Ra, Ka. Ra, Ka is Ruach. Ra, Ka means the spirit of Ra, which is the life rays of the sun itself and of the cosmos which is prana, which is chi or key energy. But in the Holy Quran, Circle 7, um, the education of Mary and Elizabeth and Zoan, Egypt, it says, teach them that Allah and man are one, but that through cardinal thoughts and words and deeds, man tore himself away from Allah, tore himself away from God, and debased himself. Teach that, teach that the holy breath will make them one again, restoring harmony and peace. So this is why I'm teaching you the signs of the holy breath, because it would make restore harmony and peace once again. All right, you go to the Holy Quran, the seventh chapter, the friendship of Jesus and Lamas. The holy breath is the truth. It is that which was, is, and evermore shall be. It cannot change nor pass away. So the holy breath, which is within you, and still exists after the death of the physical body, after change, nor can it pass away. This is the immortal portion of man, the God man, for that is God. For God breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life and made man a living soul. So that breath that was breathed into the nostrils of man is God. That's the holy breath. That is your divine soul. That is God. Said, you answer well. Now, what is man? And Jesus said, Man is the truth and falsehood strangely mixed. Man is the breath made flesh. Man, breath made flesh. This is identical to John 1:14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. They made it seem as if that was only Jesus, but it wasn't. Man is the breath made flesh. For man is the holy breath, the insulation and exhalation of the breath of God. <laughs> okay? So, when we talk about the eighth element on the periodical chart, we're talking about oxygen. Oxygen is the eighth element on the periodical chart. Oxygen equals air, gen equals fire. So, air and fire is what is oxygen.
Therefore, breathing affects the whole body, as we said. And so you have eight electrons, eight protons, eight neutrons. That's oxygen. Eight, eight, eight. All right? Eight, eight, eight. So we know that oxygen is a gas, and prana is a subtle energy that is within oxygen. It is also within food, sunlight, water, and the air in general. The body absorbs prana from the elements that it contains it and uses it in the body for every function that the body performs. This is why it's important because you are absorbing prana into you. You can increase your absorption of prana and store it in your body, making the body work more efficiently. This is why you have people who have so much energy. It seems like they never fell, fall of it. They, they never get have never low energy. They always have high energy because they are breathing properly. It is, um, but it, it has to be done carefully as too much prana in the wrong place creates an imbalance that can, be, that can have severe consequences to the physical and mental health. So, find that 888, even though it's 8 protons, 8 neutrons, 8 electrons, um, eight protons, eight neutrons, eight electrons, which is called um, oxygen on the particle chart. We also find that within 777 and other Kabbalistic writings of Alistair Crawley, that 888 is the number of Jesus in Greek. That is the number of Jesus in Greek. 888. And Moscow City which is a sect um, um, is known for its fascination with numerology and letter theory. And this theory of letters was um, numbers were derived from the Pythagorean um, um, Marcosian found in the numeral equivalent of words in Greek. Every letter has a numeral value. For example, the number, the name Jesus in Greek Jesus, or Jesus as within um, Spanish, corresponds to the numeral equivalent of a, a, a number considered by the ancients as sacred and magical. One reason for this is the number associated with the all 24 Greek letters, which add up equal 888. So Jesus' name in Greek, which is Asu, and when you break it down, Iota is 10, Eta is 8, Sigma is 200, Omicron is 70, Epsilon is 400, Sigma is 200, equals um, Jesus or Asus or Isa as 888. Jesus actually is oxygen because that's 8 protons, 8 neutrons, 8 electrons, which is 888, which is oxygen on the periodical chart. So uh, Jesus, we talk about the breath of life. This is why Christians say that Jesus was with God in the beginning. You read the story of the beginning and God breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life and made him a living soul. And then when you read in 2 Corinthians that Jesus Christ dwells within you, then you begin to start putting these clues together on who really Jesus Christ really was. All right? Not a man from 2,000 years ago, but your divine breath. Prana, also called God's breath, that's what prana is, it's called God's breath, contains galaxies. Without the spiritual fire of sun, the planet and people would all cease to exist. So the spark of intelligent, finer than atomic energy that constitute life, that's prana. In essence, condensed thought of God, that's what it is. Prana is the condensed thoughts of God. So here you have your DNA that acts as wormholes, and here you have the thoughts of God running through it. What do you think is going to happen? You're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Substance of the astral world, the life principles of the physical cosmos. In the physical world, there are two kinds of prana. The cosmic vibratory energy, that is the omnipresence in the universe, structuring and sustaining all things. Two, the specific prana or energy that, provide, that provide, pervades and sustains every human being through five currents of function. 
The five functions are crystallization, circulation, assimilation, metabolism, and elimination. Right, so we find um, when we go and understand the science of chi, we have the Shaolin monks that practice the exercise. Well, yeah. Okay. You can hear me? Yes. Okay. All right, so the Shaolin monks practice certain exercises. Um, which wasn't just for circulating chi and improving the health, but also to build their internal power by concentrating chi to um, affect the appropriate muscles. Right. So generally speaking, Tai Chi is 80% physical and 20% mind training, compared to Qi Gong being 80% mind training and only 20% physical. So um, you must learn Qi Gong and Tai Chi together. This is what we teach. Um, so the Tao is basic theory of focusing on the importance of breathing air and circulating it in the human body is simply based on the fact that the whole universe depends on air. Man may live three weeks without water, excuse me, without food, a week without water, but six minutes without air produced. Irreversible damage. damage. Without air, there is no life. Mastering various breathing techniques and inhaling plenty of God Giving air gives more strength, generates circulation of the blood, and enhances energy, vitality, and spirit. Qigong is not a um, panacea for all ailments or disease, but regular, consistent training of the breath will prevent sickness and is conductive to good health and longevity. With a healthy, strong body, one can control one's mind to determine one's life. All right. So why be saying that the air is so important and why be saying 888, which is oxygen, also correlates to Jesus, is because Jesus' name in Hebrew is Yahshua. Yahshua. Shu is in the middle of Yah and Wah. Yahweh is the old deity known as Yahweh. When you add Shu in the middle, it becomes Yahshuah, or Yahshua. This is shown to you in the Temple of Edfu dedicated to Heru, Horus, the Elder. In the first scene, Newt and the Sky Netter, um, who's the Sky Netter, and then is arched over Gab, the Earth Netter is underneath with an erected phallus. In the second scene, Newt, the sky goddess, is still arched, but this time Shu is replaced of the erected phallus, and Shu now is there, and um, it reclines beneath, no longer with an erected pallet, um, um, phallus, as Shu has taken his place. Shu is the only begotten son of Adam. Atum, and it's the personification of air. That sound um, that we make when we sneeze is Yashu. Based on etymology, the sound Ashu is the same name as Yashua or Joshua in Hebrew meaning Savior. So remember, we just finished talking about the fact that your breath survives the death of the physical body. As that makes sense as upon the last breath of the body, the body um, exhales, all right? When you come into this world and the doctor spanks you on your ass, you breathe, you inhale as, your, as part of the, as the breath. You, <gasps> you inhale as you begin to start crying from the smack. When you behind. As you pass physical form, you exhale. <sighs> and that exhalation has been weighed. They have weighed that exhalation. Do y'all know that? Uh -huh. And they said that it weighs seven ounces, 21 grams. This is what they found out. It weighs 21 grams. I'm going to get to that in a second. 
All right? So, when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one can come to the Father except through me. In other words, there is no salvation from the ravages of the lowest self, the Judas, unless you master the signs of breath, which is the life, which is Jesus. Therefore, I do believe in Yahshua or Jesus because Yahshua, Jesus, be lives in me. You get it? Uh-huh. <laughs> and the reminiscence of that is the fact that when I sneeze, I call his name, Yahshua. And it gets real good. I say, Yashu. And then, ah. Uh, so when you add Yashu and ah, uh, Yashua, Yashua, becomes the name. And the Jews know that. This is why they don't say that there is no Jesus that came 2,000 years ago. They don't accept that. Because they understood that the Jesus that they was referring to that was to come again is the everlasting life principle of the breath itself. This is what they speculate. So you find that Atum is known as the one, and his name means the all and nothing, representing the creative potential. Atum exists in the indefinable cosmic ocean called Nu, or Nun. And for within none, which means, of course, nothing, Atum emerged as the primordial hill. In other words, the mound, as in the mound builders, thereby creating the principles of space called Shu and the principle of fire called Tefnut. In other tales of creation, Atum creates by projecting his heart, thereby bringing forth Eight primary principles in which he himself um, becomes what is called the great Enad of Heliopolis, of the Sun City. The nine great Osarian gods, Atum, Shu, who is the first begotten son of Atum, because Atum is the god that he speaks of, and we say the same god in our prayers. Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. That is talking about to Atum. And at the end, we use his other name, Amen. As all three monotheistic belief systems use the name Amen at the end of their prayers. Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. Even Buddhists use Amen nowadays. As um is the sound in which that produced and created the universe into existence. So you have Atum, Shu, Tefnu, Geb, Newt, Osiris, which is also Isis, or Set, Set, which is Sut, and Nebhet, or Nepti. These gods represent the cycle nature, cycle in nature of life, death, and rebirth, none of which is part apart from Atum, according to the pyramid text. So from a unknowable cause, things created. From Atum, all other principles of the universe emanates. From Atum is born Shu, air, wind, and Tefnut, water, moisture. And really when you add Shu and Tefnut together, really what you have, because Tefnut also symbolizes the fire element, you have oxygen. Shu and Tefnut together is oxygen. Oxy, which is Shu, Jin, which is Tefnut, which is fire, <laughs> which is the most important elements for life, Prana. So Shu put forth the principle of life and Tefnut, the principles of order. From Shu and Tefnut, Gab, Nut, and the earth and sky was created, and then Gab, the sun, was born. When Shu and Gab met, Tefnut, darkness occurred. Newt and Geb then gave birth to Osar, Oset, Sut, and Nephet. Finally, Osar and Oset gave birth to Hardis or Heru, the child king, and represented the experience in mind and body. Right, you can get this information from the Egyptian Book of the Dead, 
um, or the Egyptian yoga, which is written by Dr. Muwata Ashby. But in here, it was called the Ruper M. Heru, which is the book coming forth by day. He states that Shu, the breath, or the personification of air, is the only begotten son of Atum. And this correlates perfectly with Adam Cadman, the heavenly man, as Jesus is called the only begotten son in the book of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus is also called the second Adam, all right? The last Adam, which is 1 Corinthians 15, 45, which is identical to Shu. Hence, Jesus' name in Hebrew is Yahshua, or in Aramaic, Yahshua. In Metunetcher, Egyptian hieroglyphics, Atum is the hidden life force. In, here, in Hebrew, Adam means ground, red, blood. In Sanskrit, Atmic equals Atma, meaning great spirit or great, me, great self or soul, consciousness. All right, so God is consciousness, not a creator. God is the source of creation itself. It, not he or she, it is not dependent, independent of you. This totality of everything. So when I call myself God, I'm not talking about my personal self. I'm talking about the expression of God self that rests inside of me. The verb, the energy, not the noun. Once you think God is a noun, person, place, a thing, you separate yourself from it and immediately becomes a limited being. That's what separates the believer, religious, from the knowers, spiritual. Right? So we know that consciousness exists because physicists, physicists found evidence that the universe is a giant brain. That's what the universe is, is a giant brain. This is what they found out. Huffington Post. All right? So, not only is God consciousness, God is energy of vibrating relative to the frequency of the source. The source being the very center of the universe of energy. The physical world being the, um, the outermost shell. The physical three-dimensional world is observed by means of physical senses, existing as the lower rate of vibration in highest density. The physical universe of matter represents one tiny fraction of the universe of, of energy and vibration in its totality. So God is mind. Mind is totality, all right? The universe is created in the mind of God. The law of the universe follows the mind of law, the laws of mind. Everything that is made of pure energy, which is consciousness. Consciousness creates everything and directs everything. By understanding the mind, we are able to understand reality. Mind is everything, and the mind controls everything. This is why the universe is mental. Man is the mind. Right? Go to first go to um the Holy Quran, circle seven, first chapter, the creation of and fall of man. It says man is the thought of a law. All thoughts of a law are infinite. They are not measured up by time. So the things that are concerned with time begins and ends. The thoughts of a law are everlasting of the past unto the never ending days to come. And so is man, the spirit of man. So the stars of thoughts, this is how your mind works. Through meditation, you can ignite your pineal gland into a superstar, the Big Bang. So we know and understand that man is mind. Um, Philo say man, that Adam is the mind. Adam is man, and the word man is derived from the ancient um, Mu language, also found in the ancient Egyptian name Manithos. Is found in Latin, man means he who thinks, a thinker. In Sanskrit, teaches, um, we find the name Manu, meaning he who thinks, thinker, or mind. Prana is the breath, and breath, spirit, is the mind in action. In um, Polynesia, prana is called Manala. Manala, it says in Greco Greek, excuse me, in Indo Kush, man is. Man Osarava, meaning lake of consciousness and enlightenment. Thus, man 
is mine. All right? First, um, the 120 lessons of the nation is long, God's in earth. Well, excuse me, well, it's in the nation is long, but it's also in the nation of God's in earth. The first principle of the Tahuti cosmic laws, once again, is universal consciousness, which is the all is mine in the universe, where everything is mental. All right? Um, we find that in Emerald Tablets that Tahuti constantly refers to his race as the children of the sun who were born of this fire, um, who descended from the, inhab the inhabited earth in the early years of Kim, descended down from where? Who? And these children of the sun, also the fabled men of light, referred to in the um, Dead Sea Scrolls, Book of, the, um, Book of Revelation. Yes, it is. So we now know that all matter originated and consists only by virtue of force, which brings the particles of atoms to vibrate and hold this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a consciousness or, my, or intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. Right, well, what is that? It's the electron. The electron has consciousness. How do we know? Because when you do the electron um, gun and you do the slits, you find out that scientists recognize that upon observation that particles will go through one slit or hole or the other. However, upon non-observation, not watching, the particles become waves and will go through both slits, holes at the same time. So the question becomes, why would a particle out there, ourselves, all right, um, act any differently upon observing it or not? The question is that the apparent reality is a process that involves consciousness, awareness, perception. So this is what they seen. Upon observation, the electron will only go through one slit. Upon non-observation, it will go through both, but it will transform from a particle to a wave form. So we are essentially nothing more than cellular waves. That's what this body is, made up of sound, thought, well, sound, light, and thought. Okay? Um, are there any questions I'm going to end here for tonight? And we'll get back um, into it the next class as we continue going over this information. Any questions? No. Uh -oh. All right. No, excellent class. Excellent knowledge. I oh, appreciate that. Thank you, brother. As yes, sir. Getting on into just trying to put the, together these, these clues here. And um, we're going to see everybody next class then. And I'm um, going to say peace to everyone. Peace. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.